Hey guys, uh, my name is Juan, um, and in this presentation for the NinConf, I would like to go over a quick example of nim 4 ue um, and on the way I will be explaining um, the binding system, because there are like a, a lot of confusion um, in the community, and I feel like I have to be explaining myself um, multiple times um, about this, uh, so hopefully this will make things a little bit more clear. Um, and on the way, as I said, uh, I, I will be show you, showing like um, a small demo that showcases uh, the work that has been done for this particular example, which the idea is to um, create uh, a branch of the NIM template and then just call it like NIM conf or something like that. So everyone can download it and test it. Um, yeah, let's get started. We are running um, Unreal Engine 5.5, by the way. And this is a still in preview, but yeah, we, we already support it. So yeah, that's great. So this is the, um, the third person template, right? I will be going over the code in a bit. Um, but yeah, basically uh, the, the whole demo is uh, when we reach this mesh here, there is a, a collider uh, that will uh, show us this to-do list. I will be going over it at the very end or halfway the uh, presentation, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you can see, the, 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 the mouse appears and you can't rotate anymore, but you can still move the player, right? But if I move the mouse around, the camera doesn't rotate, but if I am out of it, it does rotate again. Okay, so let's go um, and check uh, like the outline of the presentation. Basically, I will be going over the gate.nim, which I think most of the people interested in uh, nim for ue are ready now, so I will going to be um, a little fast on that, uh, on that file, so we can cover more ground. And then I, I will be talking about the bindings, and then I, I will be showing like um, a little example about uh, <coughs> how this is done, like the new add the dynamic function that, or macro that we recently add into the into the Nim4UE code base. And then I will be setting up uh, the MVVM plugin, um, and yeah, and talk a little bit about uh, UMG, which is the Unreal uh, Graphics. Uh, user interface. Okay, so yeah, let's go to the game.nim. Um, this is like the standard third-person template that uh, when you create a CPP project or a Blueprint project, uh, it has been out. In the case of CPP, it's a couple of files. Um, but yeah, this is like the bare bone of the NIM template, right? I did a few modifications, minor modifications for this demo over the over the template, but it's basically the same thing. Um, so for those that you that doesn't know, new uh, class is like um, <coughs> one of the main macros that uh, in for UE has. Um, it allows you to specify following the real conventions the different uh, properties that um, a type might have. Um, all that um, all new classes derive from U object and they are like managed um, automatically collected by the um, Unreal uh, garbage collection and yeah uh, this is the way that you will declare like um, <coughs> a U prop um, and basically you can also like share these meta tags uh, for the following one so it's it's like a block and you can reuse all these properties over the next ones and um, there is the special syntax as well to declare multiple properties of the same type and then yeah if you don't want to put any meta tag because you just want, want like a field for for for, for the class uh, this is how you will do it right this is like um the default um values for all these properties um, this is a little bit complex to play because you have to know a little bit of CD, of Unreal specific, but uh, basically the CDO is uh, like 
the class default uh, values for every instance. So every time that uh, you that you instance one object of this um, of this admin character, uh, these properties uh, will be in the will be run. This code will be run, right? Um, yeah. Then here we have um, the set to player input component. Uh, the, the interesting stuff here um, is that it is like a virtual function, a virtual CPP function. So we are overriding actual CPP code here. Um, of course, I, I, I won't be going into it, but uh, for, for overriding, uh, as, you, as you may know, uh, CPP functions, you need to specify like the, the, the type signature of the function have to match 100%. Um, and unfortunately, in Nim, you don't have like uh, consref or, or other old CPP keywords that um, you might um, need, right? But uh, Unreal, uh, I mean, Nim for ui does support them. So let's say that this is like a consref. You can just put consref here. Um, of course, when you compile it, uh, it won't it won't work because um, the CPP compiler will will complain because we are not oh uh, the, 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 like the setup player uh, input component in the base class uh, doesn't accept this parameter as conref, but you get the idea. Um, and there is also con CPP, uh, sorry, con CPP, and there is also by ref, which is this is. By default in, in NIM anyway, we are not doing anything special here. But yeah, I guess this is enough. Uh, of course, you can also add the same concpp to the function to, to specify that this function is concpp, meaning you can't modify uh, like this, right? Like the this fields. But yeah, this is a bit over 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 the, the talk. Um and yeah, pretty much uh, we, we declare here uh, like the input uh, actions. Um, all this action has like a function that we'll run into. Notice here the u funks. These u funks are special functions. Actually, we in we kind of process this um, the the user function and we inject like the self parameter and then we spin out a special function that is able to do the Unreal uh, CBP. Interop, um, 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 and also we also kind of under the hood um, create the metadata necessary to spin out this uh, this, this function as um, u func, right? Basically, if you are familiar with Unreal, what we did um, for in info UE at compilation time is pretty much when the, what the Unreal header tool does. So uh, you get the idea how powerful this uh, compile um, the compile time feature of nim r right and yeah and this is just uh, the game mode uh, which uh, if you are familiar with unreal you should know what it is if not uh, no worry about it it's not that important right now okay so next thing will be next thing it's uh, here okay the bindings right yeah, there, there are like um, two type of findings. Uh, let me pull up real quick the, okay, it's not this one, but this one, um, the directory, because I will need to open the file explorer here, right? So we, we have like three, type, three folders here, and uh, we can forget about the VM. We are generating binding for the VM, but this is like a experimental feature. Uh, it kind of worked, but I didn't invest too much time on it lately. Uh, it needs more work, but yeah, we can forget about this for now uh, because it's like a whole full other story. So let's just focus on, on this two. Uh, there are uh, exported bindings and imported bindings, right? Uh, the, all, all of these are like automatically generated based on the um, on the plugins that you have um, set up for your game. Like uh, we, if, if I open this here, um, right now we have this plugin and this plugin, right? So we iterate over these plugins and, and we generate um, those like autom automatic bindings 
but we also do it for a lot of the bindings that uh, are in Unreal by default. So you have quite a bit uh, of auto-generated um, bindings uh, to work with, right? And if you look into, into the import here, for example, there are a bunch of modules like physics core, slate, the engine module, which, is, which of course is like super, super huge. Uh, one of the reasons that we split the files, um, the modules into sub modules is because uh, we don't want to pull like everything because that would be crazy, right? We only want to pay for what we use. Um, and this is like a nice way to keep them under control, okay? So they are imported and exported. When we are developing, in, we are always using the imported, but when we, uh, and I will explain now in a bit the difference, but when we build like for a shipping build and not a bit of build, we use the exported, right? And basically the imported version of the bindings are just um, a wrapper around the exported. So the, the imported version, if I open like, uh, let me just pick something maybe, I don't know. Um, mm, mm, mm. Components, maybe good. Okay, so this is uh, pretty much, or oh, it, it has all of these properties, but uh, for functions, if I can find it somewhere here, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is pretty much like uh, import CPP clauser. So we don't, the main compiler doesn't have to send the body um, and this speed things like quite a bit um, until we have, in, this is like a workaround for incremental compilation um, or, or, or rather the lack of. Uh, so basically we generate the CPP function and then we import it in this other um, module. And the way that the dot functions are generated, uh, let me go back to the exporter, uh, engine, uh, components. Okay, I open it in another folder, so in another editor, sorry. But whatever, uh, basically it's something, I mean, it's, um, I, I won't be into too much detail about how these functions work because again, it's know, uh, like another whole story, but basically we are saving this much code when we uh, do the import CVP. And it doesn't seem like much, but it doesn't matter when we're talking here about hundreds of thousands uh, uh, of functions, right? So the compiler doesn't need to send all of this, right? Um, the way that uh, the bindings work, for the most part, uh, we don't um, like we don't really let's say import the real CPP function because that will make us to pull like a lot of millions of line of code for Unreal Engine, and that will be make things like super 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 slow. Instead, we hook into the uh, Unreal Engine reflection system, and we generate the, 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 the symbols ourselves. And of course, those symbols have like the same memory layout that Unreal has. But uh, this comes also with a problem. And the problem is that sometimes, uh, I mean, if, if you are only like using um, the memory layout uh, compatible type, it means that, it, that there is no notion of, of, of virtual functions in there for start because Unreal doesn't expose them to the reflection system. So that's a problem. And sometimes you want to uh, use virtual functions because the engine is supposed to be extended using CPP virtual functions rather than the um, reflected API, which is something more um, for blueprints um, like interop or other uh, scripting language like the one that they had before blueprints which is I think it's what's called Unreal Scripts. Um, but that said, um, what we do is that uh, we have like a PCH uh, that has a lot of stuff um, but basically this is kind of one of the entry points uh, and we include all of this file, all of this uh, file, right? 
and and when we uh, when we generate the bindings, we check that the module is inside of our PCH types or not, right? And based on that, uh, instead of creating um, instead of creating a memory layout new uh, compatible new symbol, we use the actual symbol because we are under the the, the PCH, right? Um, so, for example, if, if we I go back to components again, uh, what is this? Okay, I think it was closed. Let me open. It. Okay. Uh, the, the, you, you can tell because this one before was like um, the import CPP has this clauser, right? Where it is importing the the the, the memory compatible function, uh, but there are some types here. Um, mm, 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 mm. let me see if I can find one. Okay, it seems like in this particular file, most of the types are not under the header, but uh, I'm pretty sure there should be at least one. Okay, so let me open another, maybe another file. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know if animations will be one, um, maybe engine. It is huge. Okay, let me find. For example, a character I think it should be one of them. Yeah. Why is it here? Yeah, a character. Okay, here in common. Um, as you can see, um, a character it uh, it doesn't have like the under one and dollar one underscore. So it means that this is like um, already um, a PCH type, right? And it's, 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 the CPP is under the precompiler pre header, so we detect that and we automatically import it as, as a PCH type rather than as a compatible type, which that allow us to exactly do this kind of things, right? Like there's a two people component, it's a, we, we can use virtual functions on, on them, right? Uh, let me check the time because uh, I don't know for how long I have been recording already. Mm -mm. Okay, 18. Okay, I, I, I think I have to be a little bit more fast uh, from here. Uh, all right. So, next thing is that uh, there are hooking systems uh, for, for, the, um, for adding into the PCH types because what we do basically is uh, we have this header data. Um, and it's, it's, this is like a, a cache where we save all the types that we detect that are under the um, include that we have in the PCH and the include that where we look into are all of this. Uh, we have like um, a few entry points where we start to parse all the, all the CPP headers, uh, finding types and finding um, the headers. Um, mm, 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 mm. So yeah, that's that. Um, mm, 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 mm. Um, and now when I go over the MVVM plugin setup, um, I, I will show how to use this system and to put in place, uh, like, let's say that you want to um, include or inherit from like having a virtual, a virtual override of a module that is not by default exposed in, in Info UE. So you, you can expose your own modules, but also bear in mind that this is like an advanced workflow. Most of the time you don't need to do that because the bindings are automatically generated with this uh, memory compatible layout and you can override your functions. So 
think of it as if you can do something in blueprints, likely you can do it in 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 it for you too. Uh, this is more for those like low level engines API that you need to um, really tweak out or Unreal doesn't kind of uh, expose them into Blueprint for whatever reason and you want to uh, use it from Nim, right? And rather than writing like, um, uh, which also you can do of course, like writing um, a wrapper in CPP that you import that can be done as well as I said, you just um, this is like um, a better, I think, workflow because uh, you, you, you avoid that wrapper is done automatically uh, for you, right? So let's go real quick over the um, interactor, which is, again, um, this thing here where you can enter and exit this collider. If you look at the, at the here, at the, there is nothing in the blueprints graph, but this is kind of the... Um, the mesh that is in the world, as you can see, it inherited from Interactor. It has uh, these here three components that are already defined um, by the base class, which is Interactor, um, which is defining name. And yeah, this is how it looks in, in, in the viewport. Uh, you can set here uh, the different properties. Um, this is usually the way that you work. You create like a base class in name, and then you tweak the values uh, in the editor here, right? Just like you would do in CPP, basically the same workflow. So if we go to Interactor, we can see real quick that it has uh, those components that I just shown, and then it also has uh, this that I will be going over now. Um, and yeah, the, the third collision here has um, on component beginning overlap. Uh, we have this add dynamic, which checks um, for uh, ufunk to be hook. And when this happens, um, when you enter into 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 the uh, sphere radius, uh, it, it will overlap, and this function will be called. And basically, what we are doing here is just adding the widget that is already set up into into the screen, and then uh, we calling this uh, broadcasting this uh, delegate here, right? And for end overlap pretty much the same thing, but uh, in the inverse direction. So yeah, um, this add dynamic, um, it, before we had to do those, vine, th those vines like this, um, which is like a magic string in here, um, but now we do support this add dynamic um, macro. Uh, it's not complete yet because it doesn't type check in the type signature, but it does tell you uh, for example, if you try to do an overlap um, and you make it like so, which is, is, is not a new funk anymore, uh, it will complain because uh, you can only bind a dynamic. And this is like, you can only bind, sorry, uh, you funks. And this is something that uh, even the CVP Unreal Header tool, as far as I know, or, or last time I checked, didn't tell you about. So uh, we are kind of ahead there. But of course, it does tell you about the type, so yeah, we need to do that this way. Um, but that's that, and then we, we, we can define our own delegates, and this is like a quick sample here. And basically, we have this use delegate macro, we say what's the type, we define the parameters, and then uh, you, you can do this. I mean, this is like um, optional, the blueprint actionable. Is it, this is just in case you want to like see it in, 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 in Blueprint, um, player, whatever, yeah, it should not be, yeah, uh, here, on player interact appears here, right, in case you want to, uh, like, find it from Blueprint, but if you don't want to, uh, you don't have to put it, I used to put it in there, even though I don't use, I don't find it from Blueprint most of the time, but yeah, just uh, a note there, okay, so that's, this and then if we go back to the game uh, we, we can see that we have um, here when, when the gameplay starts let me close that uh, you can see uh, we have like we find this uh, interactor actor in the world right we, we get actor of class 
um, and then we hook in the same way using a dynamic into the delegate that we created and basically when that's the case um, when this triggers, basically we set this to um, to the value like this. Th this is like a toggle, right? So we set the like v, v is over means you are inside the object, and when over is false, you are outside the, the the object, right? So we show the mouse cursor when inside and hide it when outside. And then we kind of set this flag here to the same value. So when this is called, we don't move the camera. All right. Uh, yeah. And this is what allows us to like stop it in here, so we can interact with the user interface. So let's go into the into the user interface. Twenty five minutes over, so I think we are kind of good now. Okay. So if we go to UI here, the name, um, yeah. we have all of this, um, but I mean, don't get like, this is like pretty much an example of a converter. So it's not that much, um, it's not that relevant. The relevant part is basically uh, this here. Uh, um, yes, this three and likely these two, right? Okay, so before going into this, I, I would like to highlight how you will add a, a new, like, generate symbols. So in this case, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to open this one, but this one, if I look for IMG, UMG view model, uh, this is like unticket by default, and now it's tick because we are using that plugin, and um, it will ask you when you Click it, it will ask you to restart the editor. So if you do that, because you want to enable a plugin, um, usually what you do that, uh, what you do afterwards is you just call new gen, uh, gen bindings all, and this will automatically generate uh, a file. Like the, it will take a bit, but it will generate like the bindings for model, view, model, whatever, here, right? Um, this is automatically generated as well um, for this particular like instance. Uh, okay, this is from the VM, so, but I mean, it's uh, it doesn't matter, really. Uh, the file is there, the bindings are just different. So this is the, the important one. Uh, the, 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 on the VM, of course, they are more complex because you need to do interop with from from like in memory information towards the um, P nodes of the compiler. So it's it's kind of as I said before, um, it may be a talk in this own, right? So yeah. Uh, here we have uh, like the the bindings for the auto-generated bindings. And um, most of them, as you can see here, has this dollar one, meaning that they are rapid, but there are some cases where there, that doesn't, that isn't the case. Uh, maybe I can find any, anyone here, but I won't be looking into, um, yeah, I won't be kind of looking into it. Because um, I said before that, um, you import the, the, the by, by default, like UE depth, right? Has all the includes for new for UE, but you want to also use this like for, for adding your own like custom modules to be able to generate like a PCH from, right? Um, and you don't want to be editing this file because this is part of the, an new for UE source code. So we have something which is um, uh, a file here. We have a hook that you can, okay, I think it's this one, yeah. You, we have a hook here in, 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 in your folder where, where your game.name is. You can create your own new game.h, right? And you can put in here like your, the, 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 the modules or the, source that you want to 
um, to add into the header cache. So when you generate the bindings, this uh, will be taken into account. And if it detects like a PCH type inside this, fold, the, the, this file, it will generate, it will import the CPP symbol that then created, uh, creating a new one, right? So if we go into gain.json, yeah. We, we also need to, beside uh, enable the plugin into, into, in here, in the U project file, right? And into play U project, which is, this is just a shortcut for, for the user interface. Um, we also need to specify here the game modules uh, that we are going to, this is only for the PCH types, again. If you don't want to mess with PCH, you don't, you don't need to use this. But if you specify here the name of the module, uh, this then will be used uh, to one, uh, get the search path uh, so the, the, the header parser can uh, look into the files that you specify in, in, in new game. I don't know why this is not okay. Okay, uh, like it needs the search path uh, for, for this. And when you add a module in Unreal, it also adds the search path uh, for the UBT, but we also do it in, in, in new config, if you are curious about it. Um, this is where the logic for the uh, different search path is. If you put, like, um, if you put um, a different name there, like a module that doesn't exist, it will, it will complain at compilation time. So yeah, um, you can get this, can't get this uh, wrong. And this also is used for linking uh, because when we um, are in dev mode, we have like um, a DLL, right? Uh, that allows us to hold reload without restarting the editor or anything. We just swap the DLL, uh, but when we ship, what we ship actually is uh, CPP files that Unreal compiles. So we need this also for, for linking our DLL, right? We need to find like that we're using this module um, and we go into it. When we compile, we, we check for these uh, definitions in here and we just uh, find them, the symbols, right? That we need in order to be able to to compile our our DLL that then will be loaded by by um, Unreal Engine. So that's that. Let me get back into the talk. Okay. So we cover already this. Um. Okay. I, I'm going to be kind of quick about this, but um. I wanted to also have an example. Of this because I feel like it's kind of a cool framework to that Unreal has. Um, it kind of it's it, it good because it showcases the um, interrupting and the hooking mechanism that we have for the bindings. Um, but it also it's a pretty cool plugin on its own. Until now, um, Unreal didn't have like a MBBF framework to work with, um, and you have to do uh, like the if you wanted to do a UI, you usually create a, a widget. Um, you inherit from that widget in Blueprint or in, in the from the widget editor. And then you specify here the U props, like for example, the labels that this will have. Um, and there is uh, like, for example, here, if I do, okay, let's say I have this and then title label. There is this utex blocks pointer, right? This is fine, um, but there is like a caveat with this, which is maybe the class that inherited it doesn't have this because you have to, uh, for in order to design them to work, you need to specify the 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 actual label, right? So there is this bind widget um, function. So it, this makes sure when you compile the child that uh, you have this created, actually created, uh, you can assume that it is like not nil or anything like that. But this is like the old way of doing things. And now it's like much more simple. 
Um, and basically it's using the NVVM pattern, which I think was introduced by Microsoft Silver Light at some point in the 2000s or something. Um, and yeah, and this is basically you have like, you inherit from this type here, from this base type, and you have your properties in the same way, but uh, they are marked as a field notifier. Um, and what it does is to it hooks in the property into 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 like the real NVVM plugin and, and what's not. But we also do something cool, which is um, if, if if a property is marked with this, what we do is we spin out extra code to make sure that when we update like this the title, for example, or if we put something else. Uh, under the hood, it also broadcasts the property. So whatever is subscribing to it, it's also notified, right? So in the name code, you just do an assignation, but in, in reality, you are also assigning the value and broadcasting the, the, the value as well, right? So let me show you real quick um, the user interface again. So this is uh, like a switch. Uh, you can, um, this is a label, you can edit it if you click here, put something else. Uh, I, I would, I, I didn't have the time to put a save button, but imagine there is like a save button here instead of the, of the, la of the, of the pencil. Uh, this is straightforward to do because if you, want, if you are wondering how to do it, you just need to follow the same code, the, the same thing that we, we did for the label and the edit box because they are two different things, right? Uh, yeah, and that's that. That's the user interface. So um, the, um, the designer, um, this is, it has like two files, right? Uh, one is the, um, the panel, uh, which is this, like the whole window, right? Um, uh, it also has like a, a list view. So it will be two components, the list view and the, the decoration and all of that, that we have here. Um, but um, the list view is construct with another item, which is the list item. I will go over it first because the bindings are most of them are here. So basically, we have this is the the, the like the the controls that we have. Um, and yeah, we are showing like both of them here. If you want to look how it looks, you can just hide one of them, like for example this one. This is how it will look, right? Um, and yeah, this is like a super powerful um, designer that obviously we don't have time to go over because it has a lot of functionality. You can uh, do animations uh, on the CPU here with a timeline, or you can do it in the in the in the GPU using like uh, the material graph, or you can do it. Um, you can do a lot of things um, on the on the editor, and it's pretty powerful. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on the NVVM plugin. So we have like a view mode. Okay, this is, there are two here because I, I didn't restart the editor and every time you compile, um, you make change. Um, we create, if, if you change a class, we create some other class, right? Uh, and we append this one here. This is like how the reinstance system works. Uh, they do something similar in CPP. Um, but yeah, um, this is part of the whole reloading process. So forget about this uh, and just focus on this one. Um, if we look at this, uh, this is our view model what we have in here, right? In NIM, yeah. And basically it has like done, is editing and title. Um, the view model properties, um, this is like a specify as, this is manually created, right? And then this is the, are the findings. Uh, if you look at this, for example, this is bind here. Like it has a property set check, and here you have different uh, ways. It was set to one way to widget, but it should be set to two way to widget because we want the this property in the view model, right, to be bound with this one. Okay, and basically. Um, on the left, you put the widget. On the right, you put the view model. On the middle, you set like how to 
what should be going in what direction. And then there is also converters, uh, like for example here, we are saying if we are editing, right, uh, we want the, like we want the, um, the text label to be hidden, like to be collapsed when, when this is true. And when not, we want it to be visible. That's why when we click the button, Uh, uh, okay, I may change something here that they should not change. Uh, that should not happen, but whatever. Let's put it back in here. Okay. Um, and yeah, basically uh, you can put from one type to the other and you can use like converter functions. Uh, those converter function here, this one is like, um, it detects the types, that hence it only shows this one. It goes from the visibility enum, um, from, from Brulean to visibility, sorry. Um, but you could also potentially have your own enum. And the way to do those is, let's say, let's add something else here, for example. Okay, maybe uh, like converted functions, if you look here into NIM, okay, there are two ones that pick text como ent uh, as an entry and like as an output, sorry, it looks for the output. So this one will convert um, an integer to a text and this one will convert an object to a text. And this is just examples that I put in here. So you can see um, they are the bottom. So it's just like this, you put these uh, metas and then you define your function, you can have a default variable, uh, values um, for the argument. Um, it generates like a user interface for you, like similar to this one. Like, I mean, if, if I do it now, okay, let me find him again. Like, I don't know, this one. So what happened? Okay. Name it's this one. Okay, I don't know why it's not bringing it up, but yeah, um, maybe it's because it's already created and the plugin is kind of experimental. But um, basically, you get a panel like this. I won't be like debugging that because uh, it will take, I guess, more time, and we are short of time. Um, and yeah, and it, it generates the properties, right? Uh, or like the 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 this inter inter user interface from the property arguments that you have here because these values or arguments here are also your properties right that's why it's able to to generate that user interface for it okay so yeah that's uh, basically it um here this is just like um the to-do list, uh, if we look at the view model, it has this item view model and it only has like this, right? Um, which is the whole list of items that get hooked into this um, property set um, list uh, set uh, list items. Uh, it will populate them and when you add one or remove one, um, it will be listening to them and uh, it will respond to updating the user interface based on how many entries we have, right? And then you can also find uh, functions like this to toggle uh, edit. Uh, every time we click the pencil button, uh, this is called, and we run this code. Basically we toggle uh, is editing and then we set um, the new, the, the, the title, um, and broadcast the change, uh, the broadcast the change of the value by in this case, right? So if you want to see how that was done, it's basically this. Uh, we have this button here, um, and then we link into from on press into the that particular function. Um, and yes, I think this should be it. Yeah. Yeah, let me show it last one more time here. And yeah, thank you for 
for maybe a bit uh, this far, um, if you have any question, please let me know. And thank you. <laughs>